What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Chill, where every single Monday, I, Graham, Gius, and Matthews break down all the original programming that I watch on the WWE Network. Today, we're talking the latest episode of WWE Ride Along that aired after Raw last week, entitled Magical Misery Tour. So we got The Miz and The Miz Taraj. We've seen before on Ride Along, along with The Miz, but we've had The Miz on here with Maurice. We've had The Miz on here, I believe, with Dolph Ziggler. Maybe Zack Ryder. I believe we've seen Miz on here a few times. So Miz is back with the Mizdarage. And we had the Mizdarage on here, like, not too long ago either. Like, maybe late last year in the last quote-unquote season of the show. So we got the Mizdarage on the show with the Miz, of course, as well as the Revival. So a very entertaining episode on the whole. Um, as usual, I will be doing my break, you know, my play-by-play -play breakdown of the episode. Starting with Miz, Dallas, and Axel riding together in a limo, a lot like Elias in the previous episode. They're leaving from Baltimore for Philadelphia, so maybe for Rumble Weekend? I don't know if they had a, a live event in uh, Baltimore right before Philly, but I believe that's where they were. So anyway, a Revival, when they leave in their car, they have no flips written on the license plate, which is pretty sweet. Uh, that'd be pretty awesome to get. The Miztourage, they drink champagne. They get champagne and order food from Jimmy's Famous Seafood in Baltimore. I've never been there, but I heard it was good. Um, so they get food ordered from there. Revival, on the other hand, they don't want seafood. They don't want champagne. Or that they can't drink champagne. They're fucking driving, so I would hope not. Um, all they need is coffee. So they order up coffee from Starbucks in the area, and they get super excited when they find out that Starbucks is open until 10, and they have enough time to get there in time. So anyway, Revival also get Chipotle, which I've only had once. I got Chipotle about a year ago with my roommate from college. And I, it was good, not nearly as good as he made it out to be, but it was all right, so I could understand why Revival would like it. Um, they talk about living life on the road, the Miztourage indulge in eating their food for quite a while. We get uh, a number of minutes where the Miztourage is simply eating their food, and that's all they're doing while making fun of the Revival and their accent and why they love wrestling, and they're sitting in the back of this limo eating fucking Jimmy's Famous Seafood and all this other stuff. I think Miz is having a steak, not that that's really relevant, but for what it's worth. Uh, Miz talks about very briefly his idea to form the Miztourage, seeing as how he uh, filmed the, the Marine, I believe, 4 or 5. I think it was the Marine 5. It might have been 4. Um, he filmed one of the Marine movies with, um, with Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. And he realized about a year ago, last summer, that, hey, these guys aren't doing anything. I need a posse. Why not bring these guys into my group? And especially since Maurice was leaving TV at that point because she got pregnant, um, he, he kind of needed someone to work off of. The Miz has always worked great when working alongside someone that he can kind of bounce off of, whether it's been R-Truth, John Morrison, Alex Riley, and now The Miztourage. So uh, they talked about, or The Miz said that while he was gone filming The Marine Six, The Miztourage really wasn't doing much, but Miz said he watched Raw and saw Elias um, playing with them, like their instruments or whatever, and he loved the harmonica that Curtis Axel was playing, so... Um, I guess that was uh, something that Miz loved, and I really enjoyed it as well. I'm surprised they haven't done more with Miz and Elias. Maybe at some point coming out of WrestleMania, but it would be cool to see those two going at it. Uh, the Miz Taraj recalls singing Christmas carols in Miz's absence for that Christmas episode of Raw. Not something they really enjoyed, but they had to do it to, uh, you know, for whatever reason on that episode of Raw, I completely forget that they did that. Um, the Revival recall their debut on the main roster the night after WrestleMania 33, and how it was kind of weird for them, because prior to that point, they never really been prominently featured in their careers. Um, they kind of flew under the radar in NXT in 2014 and 2015. 2016, they kind of came into their own as one of the best tag teams, not only in NXT or even WWE, but I would say the world. And in um, 2017, wasn't their best year. They talk about their journey to the main roster and how injuries really kind of ruined what could have been a great 2017 for them. With Dash Wild, our first breaking his jaw, or whatever it was, and then uh, Scott Dawson, then hurting, I think it was his shoulder, at a live event in August of 2017, so their 2017 was not what it should have been, but they are uh, determined to make 2018 their year. Meanwhile, in the Miztourage uh, limo, in the Miztourage ride, Curtis Axel recalls winning the Intercontinental Championship on Father's Day back in 2013, and called it one of the coolest nights of his career. And it was. It was easily the, the, the peak of Curtis Axel as a singles guy. Really, is in any form of competition, that was the peak of his WWE career was that night when he won the IC title on Father's Day. A great match, great moment, payback 2013. Really, really loved that show. Um, anyway, 
So we see Miz saying that everything happens for a reason. Or no, they, the, the revival say, rather, that everything happens for a reason when it comes to their injuries and whatnot. Uh, Miz remembers being tossed out of the Royal Rumble match by Hornswoggle in, I believe, 2008. Not something he wants to remember fondly, but he remembers like the, the journey he had to go through to get to where he is today. Curtis Axel, on that same note, also talks about never being eliminated, technically, from the 2015 Royal Rumble and having that like Hogan mustache when he did the Axelmania thing and that became huge for his career back in 2015. And uh, I think at that point, soon after anyway, um, he had his first kid, or one of his first few kids, and he was still sporting the Hogan mustache at that point, which he was then forced to shave off because Hogan got in big trouble with the company. So that character went down the tubes, unfortunately. Not like he was going anywhere anyway, but he did have some traction with the whole Axelmania thing. I will give him that. Uh, Miz Drage drink more champagne. The Revival say that Raw 25 was heartbreaking but cool and admit that one day they wish to be the ones beating up the young guys. So they basically want to be in the New Age Outlaw spot in 20 years on Raw 55, maybe, or Raw 45, I guess. Uh, the Revival answers some Twitter questions, and they say they knew from the beginning that hashtag FTR stood for Forever the Revival. They don't really mention the Young Bucks. They don't talk about the fact that it might mean fuck the Revival, which is what the Young Bucks, you know, obviously started along with Cody Rhodes about a year ago. Um, they're still not, they're not really doing that anymore. I know it turned into FTRR, and that was a running joke for a while. Also went nowhere. Um... But anyway, so they talk about that, and they talk about always believing in themselves and all that other stuff, and they answer some more questions about this and that and just kind of miscellaneous stuff. Um, Bo Dallas talks about having cows and many more animals at his at his house and his farm, so to speak, basically a zoo, and he shares a story about smelling animal shit at his house, and he's basically drunk by this point. He is obviously drunk at this point in the episode, just to give you an FYI. If it wasn't already obvious by the stuff that he was talking about, um, anyway, so while Maurice, or while Miz and the Miz Tarage are riding along, Maurice calls Miz. Miz says, I can't pick up, I'm on the camera right now, I can't, you know, we're filming ride along. And she says that Pumpkin wants to FaceTime you, which is their dog. And Miz said, is it okay if he's on TV? And I guess she said, maybe yeah or no, I'm not sure. Um, but the, they FaceTime the dog, and it wasn't really the dog. It was a picture of the dog, and Miz was fucking doing the little mouth over it. it wasn't actually the dog. It would have been cool if it was, but I guess they didn't want to have the dog on the episode for whatever reason. They thought it'd be funnier if they had Miz voice the dog, but anyway. And then to end the episode, we have Bo Dallas farting in the limo, and then Curtis Axel and Miz rushing out accordingly. So that was the Magical Mystery Tour, uh, Misery Tour, excuse me, not Magical Mystery, Magical Misery Tour of Ride Along with Miz Taraj and The Revival. So on the next episode, we got Ginger Mahal and the last remaining healthy Singh brother that's not injured. I forgot what his name was, to be honest with you, but that's who was on the next episode. As well as AJ Styles and Bobby Roode. That should be very entertaining. I doubt they'll mention TNA, of course, but should be great nonetheless, given their history as opponents and as partners and Fortune 4 and all that other stuff. But anyway, guys, that is my review of the Magical Misery Tour episode of Ride Along. Be sure to check it out on the WWE Network, aired last week after Raw, whatever airs after Raw tonight on the WWE Network. I will be talking about right here on WWE Network and Chill next Monday. So with all that being said, folks, have a great rest of your week. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.